Mr. My staff, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of sortorium with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Okay, I see we have a quorum. Uh, Commissioner Brown had a business conflict and he will not be in attendance. And we'll move on. Do I have an approval of our today's agenda? I so move. Have a second? Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So approved. <clears throat> We're having some computer problems. And we do not have a copy of the minutes of the last meeting for today. And uh, with your approval, we'll read those and approve them next month. Uh, there is no old business. We have one appeal. Request to appeal always stop at Brunswick Place and Waterford Way. Requested by Council Member Duval, District 33. Councilman, I'm going to ask for a staff report. And if you would, you or any others would make any comments, just step to the lectern, your left and my right, and be sure the red button's on, and we'll hear you. Staff? Well, the very first thing I have to do is correct the agenda. It's a Berwick place, not Brunswick place. Um, so, even it, on your screen also, it's Berwick, B-U-R-W-I-C-K. Um, okay. We have a request for an always stop. It's a, it's a three-legged or a T intersection like you see on the screen in front of you. Um, when we get a request for an always stop, as you know, we look for... We look at the volume, we look at the sight distance, and we look at the accidents, and we look for pedestrians crossing. Um, in this particular case, it's a residential roadway, very low volume. Um, but what I will say about this is, at least it's equal distribution, and you'll see the numbers when we get to it. Um, coming up Berwick Place, looking down Waterford, typical residential area, um, sight distance is good. Go back one more. Or, wherever that truck was parked. That truck right there is parked at the intersection um, on the opposite side of the T, so you can get your bearings. The stem of the T would be coming down at the bottom of the screen. All right, Corby. Another visual of the area. And there's the picture you need to see. This would become an always stop. You see the stop sign on the left. You'd see a stop sign in the foreground and another in the background if this were to become an always. Um, the, one of the issues I do have is stopping cars in front of residential houses. I, the people that live there usually don't like it very much, but that's why we rely on the councilman and the neighbors to go over that. That's one thing we're <clears> going to talk about. Um, the numbers, two, these are ADTs, 24-hour volumes, 288 on Berwick, 268 on Waterford. Very good distribution when you're looking at an all-way stop. That's what you're looking for. In our case, you're looking for higher numbers, but at least the distribution is there. 35, I mean, a 30 mile per hour speed limit, good sight distance, good accident history on record. They're gonna tell you about some other accidents, and I think you had some pictures that were gonna be passed around about some accidents that were not in the file that we referred to, but that doesn't mean they didn't happen, obviously. Um, go back to the numbers real quick, Corby. Your AM peak hour on the bottom, 43 vehicles on Berwick, 23 on Waterford, on the PM peak, 24 and 24. Bottom line, extremely low volume, neighborhood intersection, good distribution for putting in an always stop if that's what you're looking for. But our hands were tied at that point. We didn't meet the warrants because the volumes aren't there as far as highest. We gotta have minimum 200 vehicles for an always stop. See those numbers at the bottom? Um, go ahead, one more, Corby and you didn't have the accident. So our hands are tied. It, it, I will say, putting in an always stop here will not cause a traffic concern as far as backups, as far as delays, as maybe concern about violations, people rolling through it. My main concern would be about the two neighbors that ha now have cars stopping in front of their houses, and that's why we have the councilman here to address that. Otherwise, very common to put an always stop in a neighborhood like this. 
We just couldn't authorize it ourselves. Okay. We'll now open our commission up for a public hearing. And, Councilman, if you would, identify yourself and also your guest if he would like to speak. And when you're through, be sure and sign a signing sheet at the front table there. I will. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. Uh, Chip, thank you so much for your report. I kindly appreciate it. Excuse me. Uh, the neighborhood has been after me for about four years to get this particular stop area addressed. Um, I have a number of, a couple of witnesses here with me. One of the folks happened to be right in front of the uh, particular intersection, so they are for this uh, particular three-way stop now. Uh, we also have a petition here signed by 60-some neighbors in the general vicinity, all of them supporting and asking for, for this particular support. We've had accidents there. I know you don't have anything on your police report, but we actually brought some photos with us, and we have petitions of support. Um, I, don't, I can stand up here and just ramble on, but what I would rather do is yield the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Tom Phillips and Ms. Roseanne Hayes and let them tell you. Both of those, are re both of them are residents. Ms. Hayes lives on Berwick, and um, and Tom lives on Waterford Way, and will give you a very good feel for what's going on. Uh, did you need my address? Did I fail to give you that? Just sign it on the sheet. Okay. Be fine. And so I, I thank you for allowing me and hearing this case, and I thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Okay. Okay. If you thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tom Phillips. I live at 3761 Waterford Way. Uh, it is one house down from the intersection. Uh, we brought some pictures today. Did you hand those out? I'll let them pass those around. This is, uh, oh, there you go. I think we have those. We've already passed them around. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's my mailbox. It's been uh, knocked down twice now in the last five or six years, uh, directly related to coming around that intersection and not slowing down. Uh, when you come down the intersection, if it's slick at all, rain, sleet, snow, anything like that, you're going to slide into my front yard and either hit my mailbox or my car, something like that. So my bell mailbox has been kind of blocking me. Uh, in the last five to seven years, we've also lost two pets. Uh, two of my neighbor's dogs have been run over at that corner. Uh, we currently have a lot of children in the eight to 11 year old range riding their bicycles. And, and it's really, you know, starting to worry the neighborhood quite a bit that, that they might be in peril as well. Um, there's just, the people need to stop right there. And I, th I think the neighborhood is in agreement. Uh, that, that a three-way stop there would be in the best benefit of the neighborhood. Okay. Any other comments uh, that you have? Yeah, when I go to work in the morning, uh, I leave at, you know, about 7 to 7.30. Uh, when I come outside, the, the children, you saw a red truck right there that's been parked. If you, somebody made the, the, the comment that you could see it on Google Earth. When you Google that, that red truck's been there for a couple of years. Well, the kids, their bus stop is right there, and they have to run out in front of that truck to catch their bus. So it's kind of, it, it's really becoming a, a safety hazard. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's that's all I had. Did you have anything yeah. else, Rosie? Or? I just, okay. I just I wanted know. to elaborate. I, I live on Berwick Place, and um, I walked Roseanne, the, we know you, but would you identify yourself uh, to Rosanne those Hayes, who don't? Sorry. <laughs> And I, I live on Berwick Place, and um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't a serious matter. And um, I walked the community this weekend just to talk to residents and see what their concerns were. And everyone related to the red truck, it needs to move. Well, we cannot move the red truck because it's on public right-of-way. So they said we need a, a stop sign there to slow traffic down because we have a new subdivision that has come in, and they fly down Waterford as well as fly down Berwick. And a lot of times they even pass the stop sign at Berwick and Waterford. So um, we've had radar there. We've had the trailer out there to check the speed. And um, that doesn't seem to make a difference. We've also just recently had another accident there. Um, I almost hit a lady head on coming down Waterford and it would have been my fault because I was moving over to get out of the way of the red truck and then she didn't see me and then here we go. So we it's just a, a very serious intersection there and um, we felt like the neighbors uh, talking to everyone this weekend 
uh, a stop sign at both of those at that street would right now, probably save right someone's right life, right and that's what we're uh, you know wanting to do here. So we appreciate if you would really <coughs> seriously consider placing an always stop sign on Waterford. We would greatly appreciate it. And I have petitions. I was not able to see everyone, but I have over 60. So if that makes any difference to you, I'd be glad to submit them to you. And you're welcome to, um, you know, look at them. And if you have any questions, to contact me. Okay. If you would, before you leave, just leave the petition with the young lady to your left. And uh, we appreciate your comments. Anyone else wish to speak in this behalf? Well, we're here to hear both sides. And uh, so, if there's no other speakers, we'll I'll now close the public hearing and ask for comments from the commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a couple of questions, um, uh, one of which is uh, for the staff. What is the current speed limit overall on that street? The current, I'm glad you asked, current speed limit is 30, and when we did our study recently, we got a speed of 28. So the speed limit signs say 30, and our data collection was 28. Okay, 30. All right. And uh, the next question I'd like to address uh, to Councilman Duvall, if he doesn't mind. Uh, Councilman Duvall is a very modest individual mm -hmm. and a very honorable person with the city council. He served as the uh, vice chair for the last year up mm -hmm. until this past right. September. So. Thank you, Frank. Uh, but anyway, uh, you said that you... Uh, were contacted four years ago, and you're just responding now? Well, no, it's not just responding now. We've taken a look at this intersection uh -huh. before. And in the past, we had that on the agenda here before. And, and, yeah, we, I, I had run it by Ollie in the past, and we had looked at it. But and, it never came before and the commission. we never brought it before. We never pushed the issue any further. But now that we're, it's continuing to be a, a growing problem, and we have now a petition with 60-some residents on there, and it's saying, you know, Robert, you got to do something. So I'm saying the buck stops here. I'm going to push it to, to you all. Uh, you guys have the experience and, uh, and the wherewithal as to what you can do and whether you think it's the right thing to do or not and let you make the final decision. But if I don't bring it before you, then I haven't done what I'm supposed to do. And up to now, I've pretty well accepted what staff has recommended. And, uh, and I think they were probably justified. If you, if you listen to what Chip said, it made, everything he said made perfectly good sense. And the community was willing to accept that. I've talked to Rosie more than once and Tom about this and said okay and there's a couple other people we were hoping would be here that couldn't be that are veterinarians but uh, uh, at this point now we've reached a point where we're having too many accidents you've seen this one well too many accidents too many chances of accidents and then we've had this one accident it's actually the second time that mailbox has been taken out it's a brick mailbox uh, I don't know if I'd want to be riding on a motorcycle and hit that ma brick mailbox like that so you know we have children that are loading in, in that particular area in the school bus uh, of course, people are supposed to stop at that time, but you never know when a child is going to run out in front of a vehicle, and I just think it'd be much better if we defined, clearly defined that section. And again, the signatures in that area are the people that live immediately around that stop sign, and if they're, they're with it, you know, I, I say we the people should stand with the people that live there. Uh, Mr. Thank Chairman, you, are you finished? Yes, sir. Out of incredible curiosity, why can't the red truck be moved? Yeah. And do you know who owns it? Uh, it? Well, it probably can be. The problem is, is it's on a public metropolitan street, and there's no parking. There's not a no parking sign there or anything to stop them from doing that. So th that's not a person per se an option. Has the person who owns it been asked to move? Uh, more than once, even by me. Oh. Has he been parked there when any of the accidents happened? Uh, I can't speak to that. I wasn't there when the accidents occurred. So is it in working condition? Idea. Yes. The truck is in working condition. Yes. We could encase it in no parking. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Jim. Yeah. I, I don't think the red truck is the only issue. It's. I don't want to focus just on that. Uh, question, Chip. If we you had a three-way stop there, wouldn't you have to have some? areas where there'd be no parking? Because that's the thing I noticed was that truck was parked right in the zone where you'd put the stop sign. Is that, that and, correct? And that's what and that's what they're alluding to. Yeah. Right now it is legal to park there. Right. To to 
move in. There's other people that park on those streets out there. Sure. But to move any of the people parked, we would have to come before the commission and put up no parking sign. A stop sign in itself is a no parking sign, sort of. You, you got, can't block it. So you kill two birds with one sign. So does that have to be a separate request? No, just per code, you can't park within a certain distance of the stop sign. Outside. So would those signs go up if a, if a three-way stop sign got put up? Those he, would automatically go up? Yeah, and he could still park there. Just have to back down the road a little bit. bit. Okay. It would, so it would clear that recourse. intersection much better. Yes. So sir. then you'd have recourse against it if he's parked yeah. within the yeah. no parking area. Yes, it would fall on the police department at that point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So just the school bus situation, it comes right behind this red truck. In front of. So it basically kind of creates a situation where the kids are walking in front. It's kind of a blind walk for the exactly. kids. The kids walk out from the front of the red truck. And where that red truck parks, when people drive around it, they cross the center line mm -hmm. of the road. So they're actually in oncoming traffic when they come around it. And those kids are walking right out in front of that truck to catch the bus. Mm -hmm. In your situation, even if even if the bus has not got there, a lot of times the kids will see it, and so they'll walk on out there before they're ever protected by the the red flashing lights and so forth. So you know how children are; yeah. they're, they're fearless. You know, <laughs> we we got to do everything we can to protect them because we love them. Okay. Well, Councilman, that's that's why we're here. The the staff are limited sometimes by the traffic code for what they can and can't do, but. But that's why we're here to hear both sides and Thank you. to help any way we can. Any other comments from the, from the councilman and, and his guest? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you all ready to vote? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I approve. Okay. Make a motion? Yeah. I'd like to make the motion that uh, uh, we approve this uh, for the three way stop. Okay. We have a motion second. to approve three way stop and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Councilman, you have a unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And others, uh huh? Little red truck's going to be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> He's going after the ball, not us. I tell you, with the uh, with the approval of the commission, uh, if you don't mind, look on the second page, the second item. Sheraton Parking. We have Mr. Tom White and his guest. And if you will, in order to keep them from waiting while we conduct other business, I'd like to take this out of order. Do I have your approval? Move we'll take it out of order. Yeah. Okay, so we move second. Second. So approved. Okay, we have Sheraton Parking. Modify existing 80 feet, 15 minute passenger zone, loading zone to be 40 feet in length on Union Street between 7th Avenue North and Capitol Boulevard and create 40 feet valet parking for the Sheridan Hotel. Ms. Wire, before I ask you to come to the lectern, I'm gonna ask for a staff recommendation. I'll refer to Ms. Marshall. I think she's worked on this. We'll get the staff recommendation and then we'll, we'll hear you. What the staff is recommending is to modify the current 80 foot passenger loading zone, make it 40 feet passenger loading zone and 40 feet valet zone. We have received the valet application and everything is in order. Staff recommendation is to approve. Okay, Mr. White, if you would come to the lectern and you don't need to identify yourself, but for records, if you would, and also sign a sign-in sheet. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ward, my name is Tom White. I live at 36 Old Club Court. I'm an attorney with Tuna Kenan and White, and I represent the applicant in this case. I want to begin by thanking uh, Mark Macy as the chief engineer, also uh, Diane Marshall and Chip Knopf for the time they've given us on this particular matter. I represent a client, uh, LRK, that uh, is new to uh, this particular site. Uh, they have acquired this facility at approximately $47 million, and if my information is correct, plan on spending approximately $15 million for the improvements on this piece of property. Uh, it's a great uh, infusion of capital in this area. Uh, the client has a block face that faces a Union Street in this particular area. They've had this uh, passenger loading zone for approximately, I think almost since the hotel began. Uh, it's 
outdated. They've got an entire block face. Uh, and frankly, the issue that the hotel has is the face of the project faces Union Street, all the parking's in the rear. Uh, so it doesn't have the right street facade for a hotel of this quality and certainly with the kind of money they want to spend, they want to have valet parking and pasture loading uh, consistently across the face of the block. So when the client first contacted me, they basically had the property under option. That's when I first contacted Mark Macy and in the interim contacted uh, Mr. Ward as the chairman to tell him what our concerns were. Uh, since that time, uh, the buyer has acquired the hotel. It was uh, commented about in the media less than two weeks ago where they actually did close. Uh, we would greatly appreciate your concern. Uh, Mr. John Flanagan is here, who's the representative of the hotel who can answer any questions as well. Uh, but again, it's a significant infusion of capital into an area of Nashville where we're really looking for it. Uh, it's not a safety issue. And again, it's the face of the hotel. If you want to put that kind of money in that type of facility, you want a grander entrance there on Union. Uh, we can do that. Uh, I've been in an office building uh, for 35 years, which is two blocks away. Uh, uh, and I can identify with the lack of a street facade, which they'd like to have on this building. So we would appreciate uh, your concurrence with the staff support. Uh, we've looked at that in detail. I met with Diane and Mark Macy within the last few days to review that. I sent it to my client. We're totally conversant with the requirements. We filled out all the information and would specifically ask for your approval. And again, John Flanagan's here who can answer any questions if need be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one question. Are you going to reopen the revolving restaurant on top? The answer is, do you want it opened? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, it will not be reopened. They're, gonna, they're going to uh, spend a good deal of money on the surface of the uh, building. And I remember when that uh, opened 30-plus years ago, everybody was very thrilled about it was a takeoff on the Hyatt Regency in Atlanta, uh, and it never quite measured up. Uh, although I have to say I remember one or two trips around that merry-go-round myself. Uh, <laughs> but the answer is, no, it's not going to be reopened for that. But it will be a, a far greater amenity when they do finish it. I did remember those days. <laughs> Any other comments? Okay. Any commissioners have any questions from the Mr. White, or his guest? Okay, do I have a motion? So move. I second. Okay, have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes carry. It is approved. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for the staff for working with, with them on that also. Okay, we'll go back to our regular agenda. We have three, three council bills here. Uh, if there's no objection from the commission, uh, we can vote on them individually, but if, if you don't have any discussion or any comments, we'll just vote on these at one time. Yes, and we'll, we'll be behind vote. Okay, proposal number 2012M. O 12 ab double one a, a request to abandon the portion of music circle E, five feet beyond, behind the sidewalk at the corner of Division Street. Request by Little John Engineering Associates. Proposal 20M, 2012M-013B, AB, excuse me, dash double out one a request to abandon John, Johnstone Court easements and utilities to be abandoned and relocated from Hobbs Road southwards to its terminus requested by the Harpeth Hall School. Proposal 2012M-014AB-001, a request to abandon a five foot by 121 foot portion of Wyoming Avenue, easements to be retained adjacent to property located at 4100 Wyoming Avenue requested by Dale and Associates. If you do not want to discuss this, I'll ask for, for a motion that this be approved. I actually just have one quick question just for okay. my own clarity. When it says on uh, the second one there that's requested from Harpeth Hall uh, that abandoned and relocated, is that the utilities that are being relocated to this? Yes. New location? Okay. That's, I just yeah. wanted to make sure I understood that to be the case. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we have these three without second. further discussion. Have a motion and second. And this will be by hand vote. All in favor, please hold your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four. None against. Okay. All right, we're moving right along.
We have a request to provide 50 complimentary spaces at the public square garage for the volunteers for the You Have the Power organization on September the 29th, 2012. Ms. Marshall, you want to give a report on that? Yes, sir. The You Have the Power organization is sponsoring a benefit for the No More Victims Walk to be held on September the 29th. They're requesting 50 complimentary spaces at the public square garage. According to the contract with the Nashville Downtown Partnership, any request for complimentary parking must be approved for the commission. Staff recommendation is approval. Okay, we have a staff recommendation. Any, so any discussion on this? Do I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion, second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Okay. Ayes have it. Commission must be in a good mood today. They're proving everything we <laughs> bring. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, the next item is our reports. Uh, this will be our consent agenda. I have two items on later on, on, on down on the agenda. When we get to that point, I'm going to ask that we pull those for discussion, and we'll vote on the rest of them all at one time, but we will pull and discuss these two separate. <clears throat> so the first one is authorize always stop on Porterhouse Drive at Authorup Way. Modify speed limit on White's Creek Pike at Kings Lane from 50 mile per hour to 40 mile per hour. Modify no left turn at 4th Avenue South on the Broadway from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday to 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Authorized valet stands on the east side of Almond Street from Montgomery to Malloy from 5 p.m. to midnight, and this will be a 40 foot in length. Modify existing valet on the south side of Church Street from 15th Avenue North to 16th Avenue North. This will be 24-7 to 5 p.m. and change it to 4 a.m. Friday and Saturday. Okay, modify existing valet zone on the north side of Broad at 4th Avenue from 8 p.m. to midnight to 4.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. No parking or standing on the east side of 11th Avenue North, 150 feet south of Charlotte Avenue to, to Charlotte Avenue. No parking or standing on the west side of 11th Avenue North, 250 feet south of Charlotte Avenue to Charlotte Avenue. Modify no parking on the east side of 5th Avenue North from Jefferson Street to 150 feet north of Jefferson Street. No parking on the west side of 5th Avenue North from Jefferson Street to Madison Street. Now the next one, I'm going to ask that we remove and discuss this one with your approval. Bus parking only on the north side of James Robinson Parkway from 6th Avenue to 200 feet east of 6th Avenue. I'd like to recommend that we remove that. Do I have your approval? Sure. Okay. Authorized residential permit parking on both sides of Fatherland Street from South 7th Street to South 8th Street. Also, we'd like to discuss the next one, which is to modify the speed limit on 31st Avenue from Park Plaza to Parthenon from 35 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. Uh, install two new signals at 5th Avenue South and the Fed Street, 31st Avenue and Parthenon Avenue. And also we have our, um, our reports from the Parking Division and Engineering Division. With those two exceptions, do I have? Question, question. question. Okay. Um, you want to move for a separate discussion of the speed limit at 31st Avenue to Park Plaza. I also assume that the traffic signal at 31st Avenue in Parthenon must be somewhat related to the speed request as well. They are related, yes. Should we remove the, should we discuss the signal at the same time as part of that request? It, you can. It's um, this. The signal is to, it's a little different. They want to cross pedestrians back and forth between the two parks, um, and the speed limit is because of the 20th Avenue connector is coming through there, and they're worried about people. So it's all related to park um, accessibility. So yeah, we could pull both of those and talk about them at once and vote together. 
you want to pull uh, that one or leave it? Yeah, pull three. Right now we've got three items on the table to pull from consent. Okay. Signal at 31st and Parthenon and speed limit and uh, the bus. Okay. My question is what do we mean by modify? Just change it. Well, you're going to modify a stop sign. And simply, where did I see that? Most of the modifies are usually parking or times related to parking. Well, I can't find it now. Well, it says modify no left turn at fourth. This is the third one down. Does that mean we're going to? Allow a left turn or not allow a left turn? This is modify. I don't know what that means. Right now, it's right now. You're not allowed to turn left at Fourth and Broad. So modify six means six. remove. It means keep up the no left turn sign, but now you can only not do it from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. instead of all day. Oh, okay. So modify the time. You're not allowed to okay. do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on these? Any other discussion? Okay. With these three exceptions, do I have a vote? Have a motion? So have we approved? I'd move. Have a second? Second. Then moved and second, and we can vote by voice. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Has been these have been approved with these three exceptions. And let's go back to the one we pull bus parking only on the north side of James Robinson Parkway from 6th Avenue to 200 feet east of 6th Avenue. Staff, won't give me a report on that? Yeah. Let's see. We had a request to put up a bus parking only zone on James Robinson Parkway around 6th. We've, I guess we didn't do enough legwork on the front end and I would like to request an indefinite deferral. We need to check with, um, there's some parties involved that are concerned about us parking buses down there, to, to keep a long story short. Uh, we need to check with the state building on how they feel about it. We need to check with the actual <coughs> bus company that may or may not be allowed to park there, see if that's an area where they would want to be. Um, and TDEC is involved and concerned about what this would bring to the park down there. They may not want the bus parked in front of the Bicentennial Park. Or is it Centennial Park? Which one is it? Uh, Bicentennial uh, Park. Um, so with that, I'm requesting an indefinite deferral on the bus parking only item. Okay, we have a staff recommendation for indefinite deferral. Do I have a motion? Uh, Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, okay, yeah. so approved. Indefinite deferral. Next is modify the speed limit on 31st Avenue from Park Plaza to Parthenon from 35 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. Staff on the Hey Corby, can this. you can you Google Earth us down to 31st and Parthenon? We'll see if this internet connection is working for us today. Um, as you know, 28th Avenue connector opens next month. Um, it's going to connect the east, the north and south, 31st, where it used to end at Charlotte. Now you're going to be able to travel down through there on a nice roadway. The speed limit on that roadway is 35, opposed on Park Plaza and 31st now. The new roadway is going to have a starting speed limit of 30. That's what's going to open at 30. Whether it stays there or not will be up to the commission someday. The concern from people at the Parks Department and us um, there are a lot of people that cross that roadway back and forth. Dog Park, you're probably familiar with Dog Park, mm -hmm. and people cross the roadway. So they came before us wanting protected, they wanted a flasher at the intersection of 31st and Parthenon. That's it right there, Corby. Okay, down just a little, or south, however you want to go. Pull the screen up. <laughs> no, no, follow that road to your right, to your right, keep going. Right, one more, right there. There's the intersection we're talking about. Zoom out just a little, Corby. Okay, see the two parks on each side of the road? All right, a lot of people park and walk across back and forth. They wanted a flasher, they wanted some kind of pedestrian accessibility at that intersection. We said the safest thing to do is put in a signal. Protected crossings, put in crosswalks, put in pedestrian walks and don't walks, mm -hmm. the whole works there. We're recommending 
the traffic on this roadway is going to increase with the 20th Avenue connector. We, so we're recommending some kind of pedestrian control and vehicular control at that intersection. The best thing to do is put a signal in. Um, and so that's a separate item altogether. Whether you do the speed limit thing or not, that can be taken out and pushed aside separately. Now we had a, another request with all the traffic coming down through there and people crossing, whether it's protected or not, you know how people are, they'll cross mid-block whether we want them to or not. And so we had a request from the Parks Department to try a 20 mile per hour speed limit. Try it would be the right way to do it because it's gonna, it's gonna have to be enforced. And we're gonna have to see how this plays out because you got 35 on the south side on this existing road you see to the bottom of the screen. The new road's gonna be 30, which is off the screen to the top. And then you're gonna have this 20 mile per hour zone in the middle. We told Parks we'd bring it to the commission, see what you guys think of it on a, to see how it would work because there's such a concern about the people that use the park and this increase in volume with the new roadway. Clarification, please. 31st Avenue is basically going to connect into this 28th Avenue bridge. Yeah, that that's my recollection of being there last week, right? Right, go up, Corby. Well, go up a little more. Where all that is now isn't there anymore. Okay, that parking lot, the surface parking lot is now the bridge. Correct. And keep going, Corby. All this rough looking area that is now a roadway and it yeah. connects right there. Okay. It connects back into Charlotte and it continues on to the north. That's the job. And so you can see how it might would there's gonna be an increase in volume on thirty first. It's gonna follow that road so and then it's gonna cross over a bridge and connect over those what are what used to be buildings in a parking lot mm -hmm. is now an overpass, a bridge. Okay. And this, it's, again, Claire, the speed limit's going to be 20. Is it 30 from Charlotte over to Park Plaza? 30 is the design speed on the new roadway, new yes. Road. And then it's then becomes, unless you change this, it's then it becomes 35. Right now it is 35. Okay. Is the question been considered about making it 30 all the way through? <laughs> Um, that's that's on the table also. Because wouldn't that be simpler for the police to enforce than? Because how are you gonna? Because my question becomes: if it becomes twenty, then someone gonna be sitting out there from the police department? That'd be consistent. Yeah, thirty would be thirty would be a different. Um, we'd have to change from Park Plaza. Go ahead to the south, Corby. From Park Plaza all the way to where it ends, we could change that from 35 to 30, and that would have you a 30 mile per hour zone all the way to Charlotte. I know that's what you just said, I'm just yes, repeating it. Yes, right. Um, that would be, I'm not sure how Parks would feel about it. This is their request. Right. We were just willing to bring it before the commission. But you're uh, putting a traffic like it in there as well, which is, provides a mechanism for people across the road. Correct. And we could, we could put the 30 out there and then put an advisory speed of 20. All kinds of ways you can try to slow people down. Uh, but their request is for 20 and we said we would bring it before What you. about flashing signals? That's all available. I just think multiple speeds is too confusing Easy. for everybody. I, I think 20 miles an hour is going to be the most frustrating process for, for, for uh, motorists and for the police department. Well, how about I get a lot of negative feedback. I mean, that's hardly well, I already know what that, what's coming with 30, 20, 35. Yeah. Yeah. It's a speed trap, and when, when it's really not, it's, it's for the pedestrian safety, but to be consistent, 30 on both sides and all the way through with, is my experience from a fatal crash investigator with that team, uh, safety is, you know, from a perspective standpoint, can make people see, um, you know, with the, the flashing lights, make sure that it's, that it's a place where when you drive down the street, you can see people crossing and, and, and there's some type of warning that might switch. Because the goal of this 28th Avenue connector is to uh, establish a, a long sought goal of really connecting the north side of town to uh, West End. And the, the multiple speed limits just seem to frustrate that effort. And I'd like to see the traffic light, I'd like to see some flashing lights since it is a, a pedestrian area with the park and a, a 30 mile per hour speed limit. I think that'd be more consistent and I think that achieves, balances the goals of making the street viable for 
motorists, but keeping it safe for pedestrians. That's my suggestion. Okay. So, so for clarification, Commissioner Green's proposal is to change Park Plaza, I mean, uh, 31st Avenue from Park Plaza to where it terminates at, uh, what's the name of the street at the south side? No, no it'd be all the way to the, it'd be to, all the way down. To a west end? To west end. Yeah. That would be, the, what I'm hearing on the table right now is modify <laughs> the speed limit from 35 to 30 on 31st Avenue from West End to Park Plaza. All the way, okay, because then it's going to be 30 once you get well, to the I don't want to put bridge. words in your mouth, but that's what it is right exactly. now. It's, it's 35. Going to be 30. Is it going to be 30 once you get to the bridge? Is that? And then the bridge takes over at 30. 30, yes. right, because it would be consistent to be 30 from <clears throat> West End to Charlotte. Okay. Or I think this is cleaner and also be better for the police department to enforce and motor and public to understand. Safety is the number one, and I believe that would be achieved by 30 miles an hour okay. with the, the flashing light. Right. Uh, I, I had a quick question. So with the, there's a stoplight going in at this corner here. Does depending that on, on, depending on today's vote, on, yeah. Is, is that the only proposed stoplight or any, you know? On the new bridge, which is not on the screen here, but mm -hmm. on the new bridge, there's a road midway on the new connector. It mm -hmm. doesn't even have a name yet, and there's going to be a signal there. <clears throat> and there'll be another and signal? There's, and there's a signal. There's a signal at Park Plaza, right there. Right, right there. I saw one of those lights last week. Yeah, there's a signal at Park Plaza. Yeah. Okay. Go up to the north, and about right in there somewhere on the new bridge, right, at, right there at that driveway, there's a signal. Okay. And then... And what we're talking about today is on the south, Corby. Right there, another signal. Oh, there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be ways to slow the traffic down if it moves through there. You won't be able to move that. In, a, in addition to just a quick question or observation, just looking at this now, uh, being one that utilizes the parks, particularly walking across from the dog park to Centennial Park. Would it be uh, possible to even do just maybe some cross crosswalk markings midways in that median there in this section that we're looking at right here? Because I think I did hear you mention that, you know, the intent is to have them cross at Parthenon and 31st here at this corner. But oftentimes, a lot of people may park somewhere else in the park or maybe coming across that area in a different part or, or from, from a different area than, than this corner. So maybe if we had just a crosswalk marking uh, right there in the middle so that when motor vehicleists are coming down there, they are at least aware that people do cross midways at that point in the park. Would that be something that, that's feasible? When we talk about safety as far as people walking across that street. Well, what we, what we are quote unquote allowed to do is, is various signage and stuff, but when you start talking about markings and telling people to cross here, this is where you want them to cross, it's got to be ADA compliant, which it should be, mm -hmm. and meaning we need curb branch or some kind of pathway. And that mid-block idea, although it's a good idea, I don't know how we would get that ADA compliance, whereas we are going to put some curb ramps and stuff at the intersections. Mm -hmm. So anyway, something to take back to the office. Yeah. When the new road begins by HCA, is there going to be a traffic light there? Did you say? Yes. Right where that hand is, Park right there. Plaza. Park Plaza. Oh, okay, good. I mean, I tried to get out one of these side streets the other day, and it took me about 20 minutes. That that whole area is just a speedway. And it's curved, so they come around the corner and they don't see and they don't care. Well, the Good. road is scheduled to open next month. That's probably that picture come up today. So, are you looking at a stoplight or or a flashing light? Um, or a signal light? I'm, I'm asking for approval for a signal, traffic signal with pedestrian, the whole works, yeah. a red, yellow, green signal at Parthenon. Okay. And I say me, Parks is asking for it, and we're, we're okay with it. Yeah. Um, separate from that, there was a request to do something with the speed limit on this roadway. They wanted 20, I'm hearing 30, but separate, whether you vote yes or no on the speed limit, 
I think the protected crossings at Parthenon with a signal. Um, I do think that she, I'm requesting approval on that. Question. I, I think one of my suggestions was maybe somewhere along the stretch if there could be kind of some kind of warning beacon like or something. Like a warning beacon or something. I think there's something similar to that there by Belmont University where we created kind of a pedestrian area. There's some warning signals that kind of just alerts people that there may be pedestrian traffic. Right. And, and that kind of device, it, it doesn't require a vote. We can that, go back and do Okay, that. you yeah. can do that. So yeah. I guess I'd like to make a motion that to approve... Uh, the traffic light at 31st and Parthenon Avenue, and that we modify the speed limit from Park Plaza to West End along 31st Avenue to 30 miles per hour. That's my okay, we motion, have a motion, please. Second. Second. Any discussion? I think that cleans it up real well. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye, it's carried. Very good. good. This concludes, I think, our consent agenda. Uh, I want to remind everyone, uh, in October, our next meeting on October the 8th, we'll have a, uh, a board and commission member training session here. So it'll start right at 2 o'clock. So, we'll, so we'll meet one hour prior to our commission meeting at 3. And uh, try to remember that and be here. Uh, uh, Chairman Ward, there, if you cannot make it, and Councilman, you've probably had this training before. This is a Metro Mayor's Executive Order where we had to sit in diversified awareness. And you've probably done it. If you've done that, of course, you're off the hook. And if any of you have had it already. <laughs> you've, you've had it. We may need to retrain him. Police Department. But anyway, being a member of the commission, you're supposed to go through this session. If you can't make it next week at 2, they'll offer it at other. You might could show up at the historical commission or the, any other commission and go through their training with them. It's the same okay. diversity awareness <clears throat> training. So if you can't make it, let me know, and I'll find a place where you can... I have a couple other items right. I'd, I'd like to bring before the commission before we adjourn. And one, we have a guest with us today, <laughs> our interim director of traffic and parking and public works, Mr. Randy Levitt. Randy, welcome. Some may not know you. We don't them to know who you are. And if you'd like to make any comments, and you're, the floor is yours. Pre I have about 35 minutes prepared. Mr. That's Chairman. fine. That's fine. And it's we short, got the we short got, video. No. We got the room to 5 o'clock. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to disrupt. I just was wanted to stop by and uh, tell you how much I appreciate all of y'all's uh, actions here and what y'all do for metropolitan government. I've been aiming to get by a little quicker than this, but uh, I'm very proud of our public works staff that's here, and uh, I think they do a very good job. <clears throat> but. Uh, several faces are very familiar. A few are, are new. I remember uh, several of you from years in the past, though. All right. But thank you for the recognition. Well, thank you. We're proud of your staff, too. They work well with the commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that. Okay. Another comment or two. Uh, if you recall, a few months back, we talked about the truck vendors. And we hadn't heard anything lately. It's chip out on them catch on, on the spot here, but just kind of bring us up to date on what's happening and and uh, what we can expect in the future. Now, ironically, I, I talked to our, our director and said today would be a great day to show up. Nothing's going to come up that's going to be controversial, and here you go. Um, we're still in the middle of this pilot program. We're collecting data about you know, I don't know if you remember, we put these little zones around town, around downtown, where people should park their food trucks if they want to sell downtown. They come into our office and get a permit, and we're collecting data on how many have come in and got a permit, how many times these zones are even occupied, are they using them, are they violating them? And I don't have that data with me, obviously. I don't even have information on how it's going. But I do know that we internally extended that pilot program because, well, if you're not hearing a whole lot about it and there's not a whole lot of phone calls coming in it must be going okay and so right now we're still in the gathering period well really we just want to know where we stand we i know one for several meetings they were here every meeting and all of a sudden they disappeared so no news is good news so i mean you know for a while there they were talking about an ordinance and they were talking about this that and the other um and all that's still out there but right now we're kind of letting it uh shape itself okay very good 
Do we have any other announcements or comments or discussions that commission or staff would like like to talk about? I'm fixing to look at the sergeant over here. But before I do, before you leave, everybody be sure and sign the resolution as it comes around after our adjournment. Sergeant, do you have anything to share with us? Make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. No, second. Good. Good meeting. Thank you.